Welcome, everybody. Welcome to episode 11 of Style is Everything. And you guessed it, I got her right here. The hot producer, Shante. Look at her. Ain't she fine, boy? <laughs> she you, looking good you. up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Much appreciated. So I'm look, happy so to be look, here. Look, y'all. We got her tonight. We're going to be talking about all the stuff that makes her the successful producer. We want to hear all of it. And then, and then we got a special little thing that she does that no, I don't, don't know if y'all Stop know. Stop lying to the people. So, so <laughs> I'm going to just, we gonna, we, this is going to be the secret that y'all going to have <laughs> on Styles Everything that y'all going to be like, wow, she, she even more than we thought. So before we get started, DJ, give me my thing song. Right here, y'all. Right here. Here she is. So look, you know, I, it, see, this, this threw all my questions. See, you threw my questions off. I threw the so, questions off already. We didn't get know, started. I want to know about this Scarface I character don't. that you just <laughs> be doing. Mom said it is the bomb. I, they they snickered. Snitch. They, 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 back, they, they didn't. They, see, when you came in, see, this is what happened. When okay. you came in, I heard it. And I'm a fan of Scarface. Okay. I'm that guy. Starface, Godfather, you're gonna ask my kids. I watch it over and over and over again. So I don't you, know. So I, I, I gotta I, plead the fifth. I don't know if I know what you're talking about. I, I'll say this much. Okay, tell me. If I do it, then I gonna have to kill you, man. <laughs> I could do it, I could do it sometime, but if I do it more than one time, then I gotta tell you all, man. <laughs> That's all I got for you. <laughs> Oh, you seen her, guys. You seen her. You seen her. She acting on. She acting on the set. That's what she's doing. She acting on the set. You see what she's doing. Force me. Force me to. You see what she's doing. <laughs> so what are we talking about today? So look, this is what we gonna do. So I want to know. Th this, and and I'm curious because. You know, I do a little writing, and I, I think I, you know, I got my little, my little writing thing going. Okay, on you see, you, you put me on the spot. You, you should have bought it, read an excerpt. No, I got read it. Stuff. I got okay. Stuff. <laughs> but no, this your, this, this your time. See, <laughs> okay. so I want to know about what I want to know is what made you believe that you could be a producer. That's, I mean, that's a serious field, and everybody ain't no producer. That's true. I no, don't get the opportunity to get into this. Yeah, I think that's the biggest part. Most people don't get the opportunity, yeah. but I've actually believed it probably since I was a little girl. I think I was probably what? about five, six years old, and I just yeah. fell in love with films, with filmmaking, you know okay. what I mean, even before I knew how it was done or could mm -hmm. conceptualize how it was done. But I've always been a movie buff, kind of a couch potato, and I think I get it from my parents. We watch wow. movies all the time, wow. so I don't know a time that I didn't want to be a filmmaker. So, so probably my classmates in school wow. could tell you the same thing. Yeah, I've always had, had so that you desire. you had this on your mind as a child. As a little girl, yeah. You were 100%. thinking about producing. So mm -hmm. you was coming up with plays? Did you start off with that um, first? How I, did you, you know what I used this, to start off? My, start? my dad had an old, remember the old v, Betamax VHS kind of camcorders? And one yes. day I snuck into school. Yes. I think I made my first little movie with my classmates. What? Just filming, making up stuff. And um, then eventually, wow. by the time I was in high school, I start realizing that films were actually being made in the area, in the D.C. area, okay. I guess because it's the nation's capital. A lot of big movies, you know, surprisingly came. So mm. I was um, kind of hanging out downtown, Union Station. It was either Will Smith, Enemy of the State, or it might have been this other film called uh, My Fellow Americans. Okay. They starred this uh, older actor named James Garner, who I only knew because my mom had watched him, and Jack gotcha. Lemmon, I think, was their names. Okay. But I hung out on set. I just hung out. I was harassing people. I wouldn't leave until finally... You were persistent. Yeah, I was persistent, persistent. until finally somebody looked at me and was like, listen, do you want a job? I was like, yes. Wow. So that's where it began. And I started off, I was probably about 17, about 17 years old, and I started off as a production assistant, love just working on whatever came to town, and it started from there. I love it. I love it. I mean, and I like the fact that you did not give up. I did. You had did. this <laughs> on your mind, and that was, you just took, seized that opportunity, yep. stood your ground, and was not moving. Not moving. Persistence is everything, it. I and I think it. it's where I persistence and opportunity kind of, you know, meet, that's where success lies. I love it. I love it. Because yeah. a lot of times, and I know you can contest to this, 
the reason why, and I'm not, I don't know if this is true in your field, but I feel the reason why folks that have a gift, like mm-hmm. it's a gift that you have, mm-hmm. that have a gift and want it so bad, but they get some disappointments along the way. Yeah, And, and those can... disappointments start to weigh them down. Mm-hmm. So that encouraging, that is now discouraging. Absolutely. They're discouraged. Yeah, you can waver just by getting turned down, getting reje- yeah. rejections hard. Yeah, rejections. So yeah, it's hard to take the no's, but you do have to stick with it, be persistent. You have to believe in yourself. Yeah. Um, you have to have faith. You got to put prayer on top of that faith. Amen. And then, Amen. Um, you know, and then just kind of seize the moment and be prepared. I always tell people you, um, you know, you can be as persistent and stick with it as much as possible, but if you're not prepared for when opportunity actually knocks on the door, you know, then that can miss and you by, it can pass you by too. You yeah. prepared, aren't you? I was. You were ready. I, 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 you were ready. I, I, I stay prepared. You I'm ready. always I ready. Love it. I love it. So, so <laughs> always ready. Share, share with the audience this. Mm-hmm. Um, who was it that you really feel inspired you? You know, we all like me. Mm-hmm. I like when I was little. I like. I mean, I ain't going to lie to you, I'm a, I am a Jim Brown fan. I even liked O.J. Oh, Simpson when okay. he was doing right. Okay. You know, I, I, mean, I was, was a fan. Right. You know, I thought I could run like him. And before the glove. Know. Okay. Yeah before, yeah, before he tore himself up. Yeah. Before the glove. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Before the, before I don't know what that fool was thinking about, but we're going to leave that alone. Messing up all that good hurts. Money. You know it. <laughs> I wish I had one of them checks. <laughs> yeah, some checks. But... I mean, who was it that you that you eyed and said, that you know I, what? I want I want I want I want to be just like that. For day. me, it was probably Steven Spielberg. I would say I watched a lot of Spielberg movies when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, from like E.T. to Goonies to Raiders mm-hmm. of the Lost Ark, Indiana mm-hmm. Jones, I can kind of go on and on. But everything he put out, I always ran to the theater to see. Very young, he did a lot of. Um, you know, children's age movies, so it was kind of in my era. So I would think he inspired me the most or was probably the first. And then as I got older and, you know, kind of um, explored into black cinema a little more, mm-hmm. <laughs> then I would say maybe Spike Lee and even even Eddie Murphy. I think Eddie Murphy is kind of an unsung. I was just yeah. telling somebody he's an unsung film producer. Everybody talks about what he does as a comedian, but right. I think Eddie's one of the best filmmakers ever. Um, Boomerang is probably in my top. Yeah. five movies of all yeah. time yeah. yeah so for me he was another one too when i started seeing it seeing boomerang and harlem nights and films like that mm-hmm. i think it showed me it just showed us in a different light you know mm-hmm. on camera the looks mm-hmm. I, when i think of boomerang i think about the fashion yeah. i think about his suits you yeah, know what i mean yeah he was dressed to a t robin gibbons was dressed oh to a t Halle berry was dressed they to was a t so it was the first time i start seeing people who look like me on film, but just right. really top notch. You know what I mean? Exactly. So I would think those we those were the, the ones who inspired me the so most. Well. It was mm-hmm. like, I'm just like the whole stage was set up where you just glamour, glamour, yeah, glamour, yeah, glamour, yeah, glamour, yeah, glamour. yeah. It was now, it was a fashion now, show. Could you see yourself doing something like that with the glamour and I would, style? I would love fashion, to. I would. The looking like straight Hollywood. I glamour. would. You know what I would love to do? But, kind you know, of a. I'd like to go back in time sometimes. Yeah. I would one of my um favorite just old old movies. I actually loved Gone with the Wind. Mm. And I loved it for some of the fashion, believe it or not, of yes. that time, the big yes. bouffant dresses and everything else. Yes. But I would love to get into some type of film that just kinda exploits fashion. Like well, that yeah, would be dope. No, Gone with the Wind is one of my favorites. Yeah. A lot of folks have not watched They Gone haven't. With they it. sleep and on they it, don't but it's understand dope. Understand how great that movie yeah, was. Yeah, it's a great film. And how the acting was. Right. With Clark. We got our first and, first first uh Oscar was handed yes. out to a to a black actress yes. out of that film. Yeah. yeah. It, a, it was it's awesome. A, it's a it's a movie that a lot of folks need to watch mm-hmm. all the way through just to see yeah. how that film was put together. How it was put together in that that time. Yeah, that's what's amazing to me, that they put together such a, a, just a a spectacular cinematic, you know, um, debut at that time, so. I love it. I'm a, I mean, I'm a fan of a lot of old movies. One of my other favorite movies, I don't know if you, you probably watched it, Ben-Hur. Yeah. Because I feel, and and this is from me, I'm not a producer Okay, I wasn't expecting you you to say that. to me, the, the best, I think, love story portrayed on okay. a film is been her. her. <laughs> when she was so in love with that man. 
And he's oh, she was like, oh, don't go. And you could see, right. you could see her just shaking. Yeah, you can I mean, see with it. love. I mean, and they, they how they portray, and then the music, man. Mm-hmm. That's, that's another thing that I look at and listen to the music, how I the do music too. plays into the movie. I get deep into it. I think that's another thing that I loved about Boomerang. That was one of yeah, the best the film soundtracks like, that I had heard in a long time. Yeah. Movies have gotten away from it. You don't see as yeah, many not, soundtracks mm-hmm. put out, but mm-hmm. when they do, I think the last one I saw, they took the time to put some good music. It was probably like Think Like a Man. I think mm-hmm. they had kind of, mm-hmm. they did a nice soundtrack off of that. I remember John Legend, a couple of different artists being on that. We but. just were watching something brand new. It's kind of a crazy. That what's that movie we watched? The new movie on Netflix with the airplanes going down, huh? Oh, leave the world behind. I haven't the, seen it, but I've heard about it. The, the score was right. good. Okay. The music is right. Everything okay. is right. The way they bring it in and the cars crashing because the, the Teslas are just running each other because they okay. out of control because they can run on their own. I'm gonna have to check oh, it out. I yeah. score this show. I score Double Cross and now, and, right. look, and look. it's new for me, so. I'm always now really pay, paying even further attention because now I do it mm-hmm. um, and just listening and, and seeing what different, you know, what different music, what different genres yeah. of music that people use when they're scoring. So well, that's, that's another great I'm aspect. I'm a movie buff. Me I like, too. I just like, I, I really, I, I, there's a few, like yours is good because okay. it gets my attention. Okay. Because off the break, you got my attention. <laughs> <laughs> great. I'm glad so, to hear you and like me it. And everything's got to like, Bam! You right. know, it's getting my attention. It's boring. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm mistaken. So, right. But it was off the break, get my attention, and then have something that really meaningful. Yeah. That's going on, not just something that you really wouldn't happen in life. Things right. That are just meaningful that you can relate to. That you can relate that's to. That's something yeah. that really could happen. You right. Know, these are things that are, that we are going through. Yeah, absolutely. And um, with your show. And I think that's probably, to me, mm-hmm. and I'm not a producer, why I would keep it on and on and on? Because right. it still gets to real life situations. Real life situations, yeah. The, yeah. Whole, the whole time. The yeah, whole. it does, it does. It deals with a sensitive topic, human trafficking, yeah. but um, yeah. um, a woman named Crystal Gibson writes the show and she does a really good job of mm-hmm. kind of t- tittering the fence of bringing you humor, but at the same time, it's a heavy drama, it's heavy content, Mm -hmm. but, you know, just does a really good job of keeping it, um, you know, keeping the story moving. And like you said, everything that goes on is something that's relatable, it's timely, that's kind of what's going on now and, you know, in today's time, so it makes it real relatable. It's important to me, I mean, as a viewer, to see things that folks can relate to. Yeah, it's very important. And you bring up situations that people need to take heed to Mm -hmm. and and see where we can find ways to better. To better, yeah, absolutely. Because we're watching things that are so fictional, Mm -hmm. they're not meaningful. Right. But when you see something that's real, hey, you you know, you need to like. Yeah, you need to pay attention. Yeah, yeah. This is really what's going (laughs) on. And this is really what's going on. It might be in a movie scene or whatever, but this is real. Yeah, but it's real life. It definitely reflects real life. And, um, Often we see it, you know, sometimes um, some of the things that happen on the show, life will mirror it and you'll see mm-hmm. it in the news or, you know, I remember one season um, she wrote about a a gang of Latina, a gang of uh, a tra- uh, traffickers who okay. were kidnapping kids and they were rescued by a Latino motorcycle gang. Wow. And sure enough, we saw an article that almost mirror image that, that there was wow. this Latino motorcycle gang wow. who had rescued these traffic wow. kids. So it, it's wow. really, it's bizarre sometimes how much it mirrors, you know, how much um, art can reflect life, so to That's speak. Good. Is it challenging for you? Um, it is. I'm not gonna say that it's easy. Okay. You know, producing is challenging. You're kind of, it's something going on all, all the time. So there's so many moving pieces to making a TV series or even a movie that you're, you know, you're constantly, me and um, my partner, Tasha Coates, we um, uh, produced the, the show together and we're, it's always moving pieces to it. Okay. You know what I mean? They're okay. always moving pieces. So it's, it's exciting, but it's also challenging, I would say. Wow. Interesting. You're the bomb. Ah, thank the you. Bomb. <laughs> Question for you. This yeah. is for, because you would be the right person. Okay. To, um, I would say, share to the audience, what would a new, someone up and coming, mm-hmm. wants to get into the game, like mm-hmm. wants to get into production, wants to get into the what would you suggest? What should they do? Um, networking is key. 
So I would say sometimes going to the film festivals, believe it or not. Um, I've been to Sundance, um, which takes place out in the Park City, Utah. Mm -hmm. um, there's the that. Black Film Festival, the American Black Film Festival is very popular. That takes place in Miami um, every summer. But sometimes those are great, you know, those are great places where you can network, where you can connect with other individuals that are up and coming. You know what I mean? Sometimes you may bump into, if you're an aspiring producer, you could bump into someone with a small project who are trying to navigate and mm -hmm. trying to find a producer, something like that. So it's a, you know, I would say sometimes kind of running through those film festivals and, um, you know, connecting with people there. Um, and then always too, just promoting yourselves. A lot of people underestimate the power of social media, yeah. even IMDB and just keeping your your resume up to date, LinkedIn, different, you know, I know a lot of people who really use those resources. I know producers and executives at the networks who use those resources to find, um, to find new actors and sometimes maybe even producers. So I say networking is key. How are they on, say someone is interested in presenting their material, mm -hmm. is it the same direction that they would um, need to follow? It's a little bit different because, so different. I mean, the industry is a place of, of you know, the old adage of who is not, you know, you know? Who, what you know, but who you know. Yeah, that right. has never changed. So right. that's why I say networking is key. It's definitely still who you know. But I would right. think that I would advise someone with a project to, the same thing, to really try to network, to get out there and try to get your project, get your film in the hands of someone that is credible who can move it onto a network. Because it is hard. It's not like you can just pick up the phone and call you know, call All Black Network. It's a little more complicated than that, or just call BET. You do have to know someone, but it starts there. And then sometimes too, um, I would advise people to get a manager, get an agent. You know, they're out there and you have agents that are younger, um, who are up and coming themselves and they're looking for new clients. Yeah, they're looking for new clients. And sometimes you can't, you know, closed mouths don't get fed. Sometimes you gotta open your mouth. You gotta talk to people and see so you gotta do yeah, like what you can move. Stand. And don't give up. Yeah, and like don't give up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I was like I said, I talked to everybody on that set wow. that I could until somebody finally wow. hired me. Wow. So, wow. you know, it definitely works. You gotta communicate and you have to um, you know, be bold enough and confident enough in yourself and in your content that you're willing to push it out there. Wow. Yeah. Are there, um, in your opinion, mm -hmm. are there any folks that we don't know about that are up and coming that you feel are really powerful, um, are really going to be big, but no one knows. But no one knows about. Yeah. You know what? You just had um, a couple people on the show. You just had Faith Melante on your show. Yeah. That is one that I, I always tell people, yeah. don't you turn your head, you might miss him. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. yes. yeah. he's on the move just he's that quick. Yeah. He's an actor. He plays Nurse Brian on Double yes. Cross. Um, he was just recently, I was just at another premiere of his um, First Lady of BMF, I think it yeah, was. BMF. Yeah. But he's definitely an actor that's on the rise. Um, and of course, he's from the DMV area. But um, I would say he's someone, and um, I'm just trying to think in particular. Nobody else comes to mind. I can't think of any, um, any filmmakers in particular that I know. You know, right. other other than other than the I'm hot always, shot of them Gibsons, you yeah, just keep I'm your always, eyes on us. Yeah, I'm, well, you, you and you. <laughs> That's about I'm it. I'm always yeah. looking to see who's next. You yeah. know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's always like, who's next? Who's gonna who's gonna take the spotlight? Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, oh, is it this person or is it this person, and then right. they finally now you know it's this you person. know that it's that person. It's this person. Yeah, That's absolutely. All the work, getting all the game. Absolutely. You know. But I can't think of anybody in particular. I would have said. A, Probably a couple of years ago, Issa Rae, but Issa Rae has definitely taken off. But I kind of knew when I was watching um, Insecure, that TV show that she has, that she definitely wasn't going to stop. I think she's probably been one of the latest filmmakers that I've seen come on the scene. Yeah. Good. And there's some other uh, filmmakers on some of the new shows. Um, the Shy has been out for a while, but it's, it's some, it's some yeah. upcoming shows. Yeah. Wow. Upcoming filmmakers. Wow. wow. You, got, you know, you have a wealth of information. I try, oh, well, I try to share what I can. And it's like listening to you from the, your journey and the folks you've dealt with. Has it any, have you been in a situation where you feel that you didn't go forward, but you mm -hmm. would like to revisit that? You know, how something you, you was like, I do. I, you know what it is? It's like myself. I felt I wanted to do this, but when it didn't seem to work out, 
I kind of backed, backed away. Off. You know but what? it might have been something I needed to go further. I, but I didn't. But didn't yeah, 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 but I, I, mean? I definitely I was a promoter for a good a good while. I would say a good season and um, promoter in terms of I, I dabbled with concert promotion and mm -hmm. spent a good couple of years doing um, after parties. Gotcha. Uh, and I enjoyed it. Um, gotcha. I brought Beyonce to DC for the first time when she came and performed at at the time it was either Love or Dream. I can't remember okay. what Mark Barnes had called it at the time. So I was dealing with some pretty big acts, um, doing Jay Z after parties, oh, wow. doing concerts at Constitution Hall wow. with um, comedians, um, wow. Earthquake, D.L. Hughley. So it was, show. yeah, yeah, I did a whole show. Wow. So I was promoting for a good while. And for a minute, I thought I had kind of stepped away from film yeah. and thought that's what I was going to do. But, um, it, you know, it's a lifestyle to that, too, as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? The hours are different. You're in the club all the time. Yeah. You're dealing different, with different musicians. Lifestyle. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, of a different dynamic. So. Right. Um, thankfully, I found my my way back to my yeah right. to my to yeah to where my passion yeah where I feel right. most comfortable, but which is in what, television what and I, film. What I tell people all the time, and I've had to realize this even to my age, is that some of those journeys you'll use what you learned I did. in those situations yep. for what you're doing now. Absolutely. There were definitely things that I took yeah. from being a promoter that I use right. even on set, right. whether it right. was just learning to navigate with certain celebrity talents and, exactly. you know, the dynamics to come with that. Exactly. But a lot of that I crossed over, even to the, the financial aspects of it, of yeah. money managing. Um, I think promoting and having to do my own shows and really overseeing that whole process by myself, it definitely prepared me for, Absolutely. you know, yeah, for producing shows. So, yeah. so it was because something. It might not have been what you need, but them lessons were yeah, valuable. Yeah, they were valuable. They were valuable lessons. lessons, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Is there anything you want to tell these folks um, about you that we don't know? I don't know. Like, I know you got some secrets. I, I, I do, but I ain't telling it. <laughs> <laughs> I got some, but I'm not telling it. You, you know secrets. what I mean? You got to no, hide. You, 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 you got a big platform you know, out there see, on the I Facebook world, so I got to hide. I'm trying to pull everything out of you. I'm pulling. I'm, I'm trying to just drain <laughs> you, see. I'm draining you. I'm taking everything out of you. No, I think ain't gonna I, be nothing left. It's not going to be nothing left with the way you pull it out. You can't go on no Oprah Winfrey show. I didn't did that. You done done it all, yeah. yeah. Can I get the tape? Yeah, tell her to just watch it. Just <laughs> tell her to run it back. Yeah, run she can give it a knee. But I think what I want the people to know most of all is that Double Cross is coming out. It's season five. It's the series finale, so don't want to miss this season. Right now, you should be binging Double Cross and getting caught up if you're not coming caught up. You can catch it on all black network. Uh, I believe season one is on WeTV, Amazon Prime. And uh, we premiere January 18th, I believe it is, if I'm, if I'm correct. So that's what I want the people to know, to definitely check out this season. It's exciting. Um, as well, we've got a new show coming up. I think I can talk a tiny bit about the new show. It's called Conspirators. Oh, and that will be, new. yeah, this is new. That's going to be on the all-black platform as well. Um, Dem Gibson's Films is uh, uh, the uh, creators and um, executive producers of the show. Mm -hmm. um, I produced this show as well with my partner Tasha and the rest of the, the crew. We have some wow. other associates that um, are on board with this. But that comes, I don't know when we are, I have no idea when we're premiering, but we start filming um, top of the year. We start filming this spring. And I'm excited because normally we, we film out in LA or last project I did we was in Atlanta, so I'm looking forward to actually being home for a while and filming in the DMV. We're going to be doing casting calls soon, so I'm excited about that. I want to make so sure. Need some actors. Yeah, we need some yeah, actors. Act. So come, come on, I'm ready. come on out. I'm ready. What do you yeah. want to do? I'm, I gotta, I gotta decide if we're going to let you be suave or we're going to take you out of your element and, which one and make I, you really I, act. I can do because I know, mean, what she, if we want she, you to be she, the garbage she, man on the she, truck? She, she remember the thing Are about you going to act funny? See, if it's next, year, if you can't have your blazer on, how you going to act? No, I'm good. Okay, you good. So I'm if good. I put you in a jumper, I'm good. the orange jumpsuit. The orange jumpsuit. You're you going to do it. This is what I'm going to do. If I had orange, I'm going to have white boots on. Oh, so you showing up. You come in like Naomi Campbell came when she did her time. White boots on in the cap and everything. Okay, yeah. So I'm you showing I'm, off okay. it's no matter right, what. But always had a Gucci belt. <laughs> always had a Gucci belt. <laughs> Even, even, with no, boots, even with the jump in the white you boots, know, okay. Good, 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 good. <laughs> you good to go. <laughs> right on, I'm yeah, but we do. We are going to be looking for actors yeah, come the top of the uh, yeah, year, so we're going to do a casting call. So yeah, stay on the look, look for I that. Dance, uh oh, hammer time. Yeah, yeah. I'm, see, I'm already auditioning, see? Dancing. Dancing. And, and look. Did you I'm, sing? 
Because we can go Broadway with it. Okay. Little, little, Shanti. Little, little tiny bit of Luther. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit came out. Just so, a tiny look, bit. Look, so look, I'm getting ready. Okay. I'm getting prepared. All right, yeah, I want you to audition. I want you to audition. I want you to come out audition. Put the orange jumper on. Man, I'm going to give you a mic. Give me a mic. I'm, yeah. I'm, you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh man. Oh my goodness. So look, so look, so look. Did you want to ask anything about the, the, any of my garments? Did you want to, I did. Did you I want to get... know what I can take home for my husband. He needs he need you what know what I mean? What, he what needs to look. He's he is he about now, what I size wear, is it? What do you wear? A between is funny. I can wear a fifty six or fifty eight. Which is a 46, 48 American. See, I'm not as versed in, my, in, the, in the sizes for men. So but is I he would say than me? he is not. How tall are you? I'm like 6'3. Yeah, he ain't nowhere near. Is he heavy? He's about 5. He's about 5'9. Five, I'm going to put him about 5'9. Five, it's okay. just so, so he's five, about, five. He's about Stoney's height. Yeah, it might be about Stoney's height. About yeah, Stoney's medium height. build. Medium yeah. build. Yeah, medium build. So not too thick. Nah, not too thick. Yeah. He's he been in the gym lately, so he's, you know. So he's probably, what I would say, a 42. Yeah. We, I, I, he needs, he needs to see, he needs to And he's been showing off lately, you know, because I take him to the premieres and, and, and stuff with me now. Yeah, so he, he, yeah, he no, like no, to put no, it no, on. See, so he like to put it on a little bit. We, so he got to come to King yeah, Styles. He got to come let up. Us, let us put him You going to tailor it up and everything? I'm, I'm going to tailor him up. Okay. Believe me, this is what's going to happen. See, this is what happens. You understand something. See, when we do this, what you going to wear? You know what? I because, just, see, what's gonna happen when, I when, just when I bought a together, hot platinum it's be, dress. It's gonna be rough for you. That's about this color. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and match his. You know, I'm gonna match his flow. Yeah, because see, this just like my wife. I need somewhere to wear. I it let too. her know all the time. Say, look, go on. Because you know what I'm gonna do. And she's like, <laughs> you got to. Do, it, it's going. What? Well, it's happening. It's when happening. I come, I'm coming hard. Okay. I'm taking no prisoners. <laughs> it's over. I'm coming here to kill him. <laughs> yeah, we, I'm gonna bring him in here for a New Year's fit. We need, a, we, need we need, we need a, we need a nice. Uh, but look, remember we talked about her with, these, with this audience. Okay. See, this audience here. I'm trying to get them to get their fashion game up. Okay. Now we do these questions. Most, some have came through, but okay. they won't even pick up their, their gift or their specials. Okay. But if I can get them to answer more questions. It would be much easier, but they but they not even asking the questions, they're not and they've been the and some of them. Up, so we're gonna go back on some questions. So the first question I'm gonna give them, me and you talked about the first question for the audience. And y'all okay. pay attention because you got to get this one. I'm up the same question. Who did they consider the most fashionable first lady? They should know this. That's who an easy was one. the most fashionable? And this is how I'm gonna do this one. Look, we're gonna do this one like this. It's gonna be. The most fashionable, and then we're going to have the second, what you might call the runner-up. Okay. Because, see, there's a runner-up. I already know where they're going. You know the, the runner-up. We talked about the runner-up. The answer to our people with any political presidential question is the Obama. So I already know they're so saying the, it's Michelle. That's the runner-up. But the answer is not, was not Michelle. No. Michelle was the runner-up. I know the answer. I know the answer. That somebody out there has to who, know this question. It? Anybody got or it? Who America thought? Colleen, anybody got was it? Was the who was the think? most fashionable first lady? Christian, anybody got it? Nobody said it. Nobody. Nobody know about. Nobody know about Jackie O. Yep. At all. Jackie O. Y'all don't know about Jackie Onassis. Come on, people. They My have to. Goodness. That was an easy. Man, one. you going too this easy. Was, it's, it's too easy. So look. So look. This one, this is this is a brother. This is a brother in our hometown. Okay. He's he's in the DMV. Okay. He's considered our pioneer designer. And he had a spot in Tyson's. This brother had his own clothing store in Tyson's. What? And at one time he had a store, Mazda Gallery and Tyson's. You got me beat him. You got me stomped on this one. And he's been around for a minute. What type of line is it? Is it dress wear, men's dress suits, wear, just men's all suit. men's stuff, men's classic suits, oh, shirts, ties, Tyson's. the whole works. Very classy, brother. Wow, wow, wow. He styled the work. The he styled people like um, what's the guy on um sports on the, on sports Sunday, oh. um Brown, James Brown, James Brown. Okay. He styled him. 
Um, you got me. You got me on that one. He's in a style. My favorite is Dr. Claude Anderson. Okay. Um, who else? Anybody getting it? Nobody's getting it. Sherry, anybody getting it? They got me beating it. You got me beating on that one. Chris, anybody get it? Anybody get it? Yeah, she got it. Who, who, who got was it? it? Sherry. Sherry got it? Who was it? Who you? Edward Hall. Yeah. Edward Hall. Edward Hall. <clears throat> I wouldn't have got that. Edward Hall. Yeah, he's been around for a minute. I want to throw a shout out to this brand right here. I'm brand ambassador so for look, this Museum. Is, the Museum yeah, is it's one of the hottest new brands in hot, D.C. Um, sportswear brand. And my girl's wearing it. She's promoting right. it. She's pushing yep. it. Y'all check this out. Where they where they where they, where they um, get that? Museum at? store is on Rhode Island Avenue in Brentwood. I think they're getting ready to open up a new store, okay. but the last store was on Rhode Island in Brentwood. And you can also get on um, on IG at at Museum DC. I believe is the site. So shout out to the fellas Let's over there shout to out. Shout out. Greg and uh, Mo over at Museum. Like yeah, I love I love All the right. brand. We we gonna do that. Now I have one more for this audience. Okay. Because Sherry got the other one. I don't know how she knew that one. She she going way back. Yeah, she Googled. She went way <laughs> back to Google? Google. That's what she did. Yeah. She didn't Google. She you didn't Google? Google? Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Ah. <laughs> uh, thinking I'm thinking I'm thinking because I'm, I'm, I'm switching my question here because okay. I know they wouldn't get it don't stomp yourself so who do you all consider the first real urban brand that started in a DMV oh that's easy it's, who's the first it's, it's, urban it's, brand it has that to be in the DMV it has to be my everybody knows it has about. to be my uncle it has to be madness. There you go. It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be get, my Uncle they, Eddie. Did they, did they get it, though? I was getting ready to say it. Did they get it? it anybody in the... Anybody they, too, they too young on your line. They must be some youngers they on the line. They got to be. I'd be like, what? And these, these are local. This is not some international. This is local questions. Yeah, yeah. You know, this ain't that deep. This is Yeah, madness set the tone. Yeah, they, they set were, the tone. Everybody had in the a 80s. Madness, you got that uh -huh. madness connection. They had yeah, to. They had yep. that madness connection on Georgia Definitely. Avenue. On Georgia Avenue. You wasn't fly. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you ain't got if madness, you, don't have you ain't a got madness, you ain't fly. And a good bucket hat or you something. You got to like have that. a bucket you hat. Got yes, sir. <laughs> got to. Uh, you got to have it. All right, guys. Well, look. We've had a wonderful time. Thank you for having I, thank me. Thank you. For I've being enjoyed here. being I here. Look thank you so to much. Seeing you again and enjoy your holiday. I and will. Your mom, I know. You do the same. My wife. You know, <laughs> getting on each other's nerves, getting on my legs. I'm you, thank <laughs> thank you, you so all. much for having me. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right, you guys. That's it. Christian, I need more theme song. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, you. They don't sing that.